Hi, yeah, yeah. I've got stuff everywhere. <laughs> Uh, okay, how are you guys doing tonight? I will go ahead and get stuff out of the way. Since it doesn't look like anybody's in here yet. Alright, so water update. I haven't drunk hardly anything today. Um, mainly because I set the cup down out in the hallway. Um, overall, it's been okay. I haven't really done a whole lot. Um, I've had some issues with the heat, but not a ton. Oh, I have... Hi, Travis and Yanai. Hi, James. How are you guys doing tonight? Um... I actually spent a fair amount of time this afternoon running around trying to find a fan. By the way, speaking of, is it too loud? <laughs> and so who is at the keys tonight? Is it Travis or is it Yanai? Or both? <laughs> I was going to say, and I have a cat making noise underneath me somewhere. Doing okay. That is awesome, James. Hi, you know. Both? Now I'm really confused. Are you duplicating yourself too, James? I know Ray does that lots. <laughs> I was going to say, I have really gotten not a whole lot of anything done today. Um, I guess I went to Roy and Becky's and then I went, it took me like two hours to track down a fan. It's like 90 some degrees. Um, so if I look hot and sweaty, that's because I am. I'm sorry. <laughs> um... Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, and then Kevin from 30 and a Wake Up popped on, uh, I don't know, pretty soon after that. And so I've been over there. I don't, I don't know how to find my app. There it is. <laughs> it's on my home screen. That's pretty. It normally it just has a thing up in the bar telling me how hot it is. It was supposed to get... Like, when I opened it earlier, it was supposed to be 91, and it changed it to 92. It's like, good lord. And now it's saying it's a high of 89, and it's 82, but it feels like 87. Which I don't buy because it was 92 earlier. When I was, drive when I was driving around. Oh, rain would be heavenly. It hasn't rained in like four days. Which, don't get me wrong, I mean, we had like a good week and a half of storms and stuff. Not anything like some places, but it dumped quite a bit of water. Um, not terribly far from here either. Um, so, I mean, it's... I don't know. We went from dry to, I think, right about normal. Um, I don't know. It's hot and sticky today. Which makes it sound like I didn't live in Tennessee for the first 13 years of my life. But, you know. That was more than half my life ago, so I'm used to northern temperatures now. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I should be drinking more than what I have been. I did take time to duct tape a window in my car. Um, so I, a, a few weeks ago, I found out that the mechanic whose place I had left my car at like two years ago now to, to replace the engine had just up and moved. 
<laughs> and like I was to the point I was going to have to hire a PI and stuff to to get my car back and by some miracle after a few days they actually responded to a question on Facebook and I wound up getting my car back last week but it has a broken window now <laughs> Like, and, and it's a Kia Rondo, so it's not like one of the ones, um, like up, it's like in the third row seating area, they didn't open or anything, so I just took black Gorilla tape, and, and it's all taped to like the rubber gasket, I don't know how well that's gonna hold up, but I figure at least no water will get in, is the hope, because it is supposed to start raining again soon. So, yeah. Um, so I, I did that on the outside, and then I'm like, well, if something happens and hits it, it's going to fall inside, and I'm still going to have glass everywhere. So then I went, went on the inside and, and duct taped it as well. I don't know. Hi, Diane. How are you doing tonight? I was just telling them I was duct taping a window. Oh, and I'm getting water all over things. Um, hi, Cassie. How are you? So anyway, yeah, I, I got the car back that I thought I was going to have to like hire a PI to get back. And then the window got broken. I don't think it was broken when I picked it up, but I don't really recall either. Like it's one of those things where it's like, I wasn't leaving the car there either way. Hey, Eric, how's it going? Um, so it was one of those, I just needed to fix it and move on, but oh my word, the window is like, not even 18 inches, $550 without the installation. <laughs> so anyway, um, So yeah, that's what I've been up to today. Um, so I was going to say, the, the kind of thought I'm going for on Monday nights is more of a hangout vibe at the same time. Oh, uh, like a little bit of, of histamine related stuff too. So a couple weeks ago, I had mentioned the histamine bucket and people seem to have no clue what I was talking about. So anyway, I wanted to kind of briefly explain that in like, I don't know, my, right. I don't have a good concise definition. That's why it's not in a video yet. How's that? Um, all right. So the way it was explained to me with the histamine stuff, I am actually drinking water, like filtered water. The last thing I ate, I probably not the, actually, I know it's not great for me. It was peach ice cream with hot fudge sauce. Um, although that was a good combination. Um, so anyway, the histamine bucket, if you think of it like a bucket, like you would put water or whatever in, um, you know, just like a pail, <laughs> um, and then you need like an inch of water in the bottom of it to do the things that histamine is normally supposed to do in your body. Cause you know, it's one of those mechanisms where, it signals things in your body to start or stop and that kind of thing. So you need some histamine. You, you can't have no histamine. Now your body will produce some histamine if it needs it. So yeah, anyway, neither here nor there. You need like an inch. And then you have different ways you can add to it. So you can eat foods that are high in histamine just naturally things like strawberries tend to have higher histamine levels than other things. And in all reality, if I, 
I don't like the histamine foods lists because they're so sporadic and half the time they contradict each other, but it seems like there's a few that are always on all of them. If it's a, a fruit that ripens quickly and goes bad quickly, um, think like strawberries, tomatoes, um, I want to say pineapple, but pineapple's not really... <laughs> It takes 18 months for a pineapple to grow. Um, that's not really quickly, but you know what I mean. Um, so some of those are just naturally higher in histamine. Now, I, I will kind of, tomatoes are one of those things that's, to, at least in my opinion, it's probably high lectins rather than high histamine. Which, granted, lectins are going to wind up with a histamine response anyway. But in, anyway, I need to shut my... This is why I haven't made a video on this topic. Okay. So anyway, say you eat some high histamine foods. If you eat one thing in a meal that's high histamine, but the rest of it's fine, maybe that one histamine food adds a half inch to your bucket. But then you go and you snack on some stuff that you know, it's all high, high histamine, or maybe, maybe it is high lectin and you have mast cell issues. And so your mast cells start degranulating. That's going to add like two inches to your bucket. And then, so your body starts to, to try and lower that level a bit. And then you wind up, okay, you, go out and there's lots of pollen and you have allergies and this and that and well that's going to add to the histamine load another inch or so i i don't actually i i don't have a whole lot of true allergies um basically um what is it um Xanax is the only thing the allergist said I'm truly allergic to, although I, I would argue that I'm allergic to poison sumac uh, <laughs> as well. Um, so anyway, you, you just start. So if, say this is our, our bucket. You've got your baseline that you need, and then you've got a little bit from food, and then a lot from that snack that wasn't so great for you, and, and then some allergy stuff, and... <sighs> For me, heat's a big one right now, so it's creeping up because heat can actually cause mast cells to degranulate too. And then it all comes like overflowing on the top of your bucket, okay? And that's when you start getting histamine reactions. So, you know, if you have histamine issue, if you're just a normal person, that's probably your bucket's never getting full because your body just processes it as you go. Um, if you have some sort of condition that leads to histamine intolerance, then you wind up with this creep in the bucket and, and then you start having more issues. <laughs> A lot of times it's lots of random food reactions um, that aren't explained. Anyway, so that's what the histamine bucket is. Uh, so Eric, what are you up to tonight? What are you eating or drinking? Did that make sense to everybody? Am I just being completely crazy? And I, I, the histamine bucket is a fairly common concept, even for doctors to explain it, but I don't know that I'm explaining it well. Hi, Wolf Dog. How are you doing tonight? Hey, Scott. Scott, just out of curiosity, do you have any mast cell issues? If you don't mind my asking. <laughs> I guess I could totally put you on the spot, and that's not what I intended to do. I'm sorry. Hey, Robert. What's up? Hi, Danny. 
please repeat everything I've missed so far. Okay, so I was just explaining the histamine bucket because a few weeks ago it seemed like it wasn't something people had heard of. So the idea is your histamine level in your body is sort of like a bucket, okay? You need about an inch in the bottom of your bucket to do your normal processes because it like signals things to the brain or to here or there in your body just as a normal happenstance. But then if you eat high histamine foods, it'll go up and say you have allergies like trees or pollen or whatever, it'll creep up then. <laughs> so if you, um, the, the, the idea is once your bucket is overflowing, that is when you have histamine reactions. So when I say histamine reactions, I'm saying stuff like hives, itchy nose, runny nose, itchy eyes, all that stuff. Um, itching is so big for me. Um, anyway, um, hives too. But anyway, if you can lower the, the level of histamine in your bucket, then you, well, eventually, once your bucket's no longer overflowing, you won't be getting as many histamine reactions, is, is the idea. A lemon icy. That sounds yummy. It probably wouldn't be terribly good for me, but it sounds yummy. Hi, Miss Renee. How are you doing tonight? Did I ever get a response on the fan? Is it too loud? Because I can turn it off if it is. Simple solution for lowering the level. So I guess the, the, the simplest explanation for how to lower your histamine levels, you generally have, awesome. Cause it's hot in here. <laughs> I really didn't want to, I really didn't want to turn the fan off. Okay. Um, sorry. <laughs> so 70% of the histamine in your body is, um, processed with something called DAO. The other 30% is, and my brain's going to completely, it, I want to say it's, NMHT, but it might be NHMT. I don't know. It's one of those two. Anyway, so for me, what I have found is the simplest. And I'm going at this from the standpoint of if you don't know what your root causes are, you can't really fix them immediately. Probably the biggest thing, make sure your body has what it needs to either, so you can either supplement DAO or you can supplement the things that your body needs to make the DAO. So that's things like vitamin C, um, zinc, magnesium, Magnesium is probably the one that I'm sort of on the fence with right now. I really need to do better at remembering to put my lotion on. It's just in this heat, I don't really want, want to. Um, you can get oral magnesium. It's just, it gives me hot flashes and I don't like those, so. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, probably if for me, I, I happen to know that, awesome red, um, for me, I happen to know that 66% um, of the people with EDS at some point turn up with mast cell related issues. Um, 
And I, I was actually told that by the functional medicine doctor that um, diagnosed me with the histamine intolerance. But then at the same time, I went to an EDS conference virtually last year. And as it turned out, they actually substantiated it as well. Um, no, just copy. Sorry, I had forgotten to do something before the stream. <laughs> so, um, close that so it doesn't come on later. Um, so for me, my two go-tos, I take Moringa for mast cell stabilization. It helps with my vertigo dramatically. <laughs> um, if, if it's like middle of the day, I ate something I know I shouldn't have, something like that, I'll do, I'll usually either take a Moringa or a lemon balm. Both of those are mast cell stabilizing. And then I'll usually also take um, some more rose hips, which is a non-citrus form of vitamin C. Um, yes. <laughs> and it's Lori, right? Um, so the mast cell stuff, it doesn't necessarily apply to everybody though. That's why I say that that way. The vitamin C aspect is often, um, one of those things that a lot of people with histamine issues will, um, be low on number one, because it's a water soluble vitamin, which means you have to constantly be consuming it. But then at the same time, citrus is typically high histamine, so we don't typically react well to regular vitamin C supplements or citrus fruit <laughs> if we have a lot of issues. Um, so we're typically low on it. So that can be a pretty quick um, way to get a handle on it as well. Hey, Tim Tim, how's it going? Danny, did that answer your question? I kind of rambled on. I'm sorry. Um, I didn't remember the mast cell stuff. I remembered that you had histamine issues though. Um, so yeah, those are kind of my two go-tos. I know, and I don't, I guess the biggest reason I went with the building blocks for DAO rather than an actual DAO supplement is because I have a tendency to not do well with things that have multiple things in them, if that makes sense. Um, because a lot of the DAO supplements will be a combination of like all of the different building blocks. And I have been telling people that you can Google the building blocks of DAO and find it. And the last time I Googled it, you couldn't find it. So, um, yeah. Um, so like the biggest issue is finding a non citrus vitamin C for a lot of people. I take rose hips, um, which has worked wonderfully for me. Camu Camu is another one. Um, if you happen to have salicylate issues, they are both high salicylate, though. Um, but, you know, honestly, eating stuff like radish sprouts or radishes, one radish, like normal-sized radish, is 2% your daily value of vitamin C. Um, so, like, if you can kind of bump up some of your veggie intake, a lot of times that will help with the vitamin C. I can tell that I haven't been drinking today because my water's almost empty already. <laughs> um, Lori, just out of curiosity, do you know if you what caused the mast cell stuff? 
Kale is just kind of all around awesome. Um, the curly kales are high salicylate, but otherwise they're good sources of a wide variety of vitamins and minerals. Um, and fun fact, like back in pioneer days, there were, it said that there were actually people that would tell doctors that were like going across later that if you see this and we're showing them kale growing in people's gardens, just keep moving. You won't have enough business. <laughs> um, artichokes. I'm really not sure. I've never grown artichokes, although I've really been intrigued this year because I know a couple YouTubers that I've been watching grow them. Um, and the only way I've ever actually had artichoke is canned, which that's another one of those things because you've got... I guess, Danny, that's another thing. If you're thinking you might be having issues that way, so do some of the like bare bones, simplistic stuff too. Things like freezing leftovers immediately instead of leaving them sit in the refrigerator. Try to reduce the amount of canned goods and opt for for frozen instead or dried. Um, that kind of thing. Um, often, because like, in order for the conversion of, I think it's histidine into histamine, you have to have water and like freezing it pretty well stops it to just the slightest bit above zero on how much is converting. Um, but then if you like freeze dry something, it will freeze dry and stay at the level at which it was processed. So if it was high histamine before, it's going to be high histamine afterwards. But um, that's another that's another kind of way to get around it and have shelf stable food. Hey, Brene, how are you doing tonight? Hi, Michael, and I want to say Bonnie or Bonnie Jean, but I think it's Michael that's normally in chat with us. Severe food allergies, psoriasis got worse, liver enzymes messed up, and thyroid shrank to a raisin. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Um... Hi, Michelle. How are you doing tonight? It would be really interesting to hear what your doctor said to say about your thyroid shrinking. Um, I still don't really understand the difference between eczema and psoriasis. Um, I've kind of dealt with that sort of thing off and on over the years. Um, and like right now, what I'm really sort of trying to read up on and understand is the liver, because I think a lot of what I'm sort of working through, um, at least when it comes to the hormone stuff, is basically getting stuff processed out of the liver, um, because all of your estrogen and stuff has to be processed through there. And so I think that's probably where some of my backup, my backup is on some of the Pico stuff. Um, hi, Michelle. I am hot, but good otherwise. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I have not really been productive today, but it's been a good day. I've just kind of hung out with people and chats and chit chatted and I actually went out in public. I don't do that very often. I don't know. Maybe that's a bad thing. Um, 
But the other day I had a fan die on me. So I went out in search of a fan and actually wound up going to three different stores before I found one. So I was going to say, and I'm not really sure. I, I pulled it out of the thing and then there were these parts. But I'm not really sure what they're for. Because I literally, I pulled it out of the box and I plugged it in and it's been working ever since. So, and I don't readily see where these go. <laughs> um, I don't know, maybe I should have read the instructions. Although I didn't see any of those either. <laughs> Oh, so what are you guys up to today? Or, what, or, or I guess the other question is, do you guys have any other questions on the whole histamine bucket thing? Oh, wow. That does not sound like fun. Now, so, okay, on the dandelion thing, because I've, I've eaten dandelion before, I've drunk dandelion tea, and I, it never seems to go well. <laughs> um, and oddly enough, when I muscle test things, well, I was going to say, when I'm, I, I, I typically, before I start taking anything, I will typically muscle test it just to see if it will work with my body. And, um, I'm sorry, this is just annoying me because it's open. Um, and dandelion almost always says that it is not a good option. Yeah, I've tried dandelion root, I've tried dandelion leaves, I've tried dandelion flowers. None of them are good options for me. Um, I've, oh, I was going to say, I, I just about said, I've been researching Skullcap um, for, <laughs> okay, but it was like a $20 fan from Dollar General. I don't think they have YouTube directions on it, um, but you've got a point. I kind of do that myself. Um, so I've been researching Skullcap. And I think I, that's probably going to be one of the next ones I try. Um, it won't be an everyday thing, but I do think I'm going to try it. Um, because it seems to help with some of those similar things, as well as like some of the anxiety and stuff, which... I don't, I haven't been dealing with as much anxiety since I've been off work, but when I was working, that was one of the major ways, I guess you could say, that symptoms would start showing. I would start having panic attacks, which always seemed a little weird because I, it's like I would have the symptoms of a panic attack, but not be panicky if that makes sense and if you if you look at histamine symptoms um racing heartbeat shortness of breath um high anxiety all of those are um are histamine symptoms i'm actually allergic to anxiety anxiety meds. Um, the first panic attack I had, I, after about three and a half hours, a friend of mine called EMS and I wound up in the ER and they gave me IV Xanax and it swelled my tongue up and clamped my jaw shut. <laughs> and then they gave me a prescription for that on my way out the door. Which, luckily, I, by the time I got to the hospital, I was calmed down enough from the oxygen in the ambulance. 
um, to realize what they had given me versus um, uh, so I realized that the prescription was not one I should fill. Oh, that's interesting. I have issues with, and I am, am I yelling, you guys? I don't mean to be yelling at you. <laughs> um, so I have, over the years, had issues with temperature fluctuation. I, I am talking with my hands a lot, too. Um, so over the years, um, temperature-wise, I've gotten down to as low as 94.3 for just my normal everyday body temperature. Um, that's been quite a few years ago and I wasn't supplementing anything for thyroid at that point. Um, but these days it's typically in the 97.4 ish area. And then like, Last week when I was having issues, it was kind of weird. I, it was low grade fever, but it was like 99 ish. And then I would drop to 96, three ish. Like, and I just bounced back and forth. <laughs> I was taking my meds and every, I say meds, it's all my vitamins and supplements, but meds is just a whole lot shorter to say. Um, I don't, and as far as the, anxiety stuff the allergist said i probably based on my reactions i probably shouldn't take any of them so um and you've had that going on for an extended period of time because that was horrible <laughs> oh yeah, that was, I, it was not fun. Um, like, my battery is running low. I should have guessed this when my daughter hadn't had it plugged in. So, I am going to run grab the charger and probably the jug of water, and I'll be right back. Talk amongst yourselves. curiosity like do your doctors just discount that it's low when it's low
Because, like, when I would go to the doctor and it was, like, 94.7 or 94.3, they would be like, oh, this just might... Even after I'm sitting there saying, no, that's a pretty normal temperature for me, they would... <laughs> They would still be like, oh, that can't be right. And just an FYI, hypothermia symptoms set in at 95. Um, I am trying not to lean on this table either because it is wobbly. <laughs> Look, <laughs> if you guys could see my setup. I actually have an old baby wipes container to, like, sit the computer up higher. So when I say it's wobbly, it's not even so much that the table is that wobbly, it's that the tower this thing sits on is wobbly. Yeah, and, like, I know, for me, the hot and cold with the mast cell stuff, if I get in a hot shower, I will wind up with hives and itching. At the same time, if I get in a cold shower, I will get hives and itching. Um, and I'm kind of in that sort of limbo area in the upper 80s where it's like... I'm not necessarily breaking out in hives right now, but at the same time, I'm definitely getting to that point where I'm itchy just from the heat. Um, just because my mast cells are degranulating because they're going, ah, something's wrong. Sorry. <laughs> um, I'm kind of middle of the road. Um, Pretty much the only way I can do, like, drinking water is cold. But at the same time, like, ice water at this point is breaking me out in hives. Which, Laura, you got to take into account for probably a good year and a half to two years. I can't say that. All right, so when I was working in a kitchen... I could drink ice water. Well, and I guess I can't even really say that that was brick. Hmm. So I worked in a kitchen. I would drink ice water. I was also working in front of a 600 degree pizza oven. <laughs> so I kind of had both directions. I don't know what was breaking me out in hives, but you know. <sighs> I haven't been there since March of 2020 and, you know, everything that happened um, after that. But for me, the hives that started the June prior, maybe late May even. So I can't say for sure that I wasn't reacting to water or heat at that point because the first place I started getting hives was when I was at work. Um... What are we alerting? Alerting. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, it looks like people are coming in. Hello. Feel free to jump in and say hi. We don't bite. Um, topic tonight is just kind of the histamine bucket. Um, and my really quick explanation Uh, um, of this is like you need this much for your normal body processes and then like if you eat stuff that's high in histamine whether it just is high in histamine or maybe the leftovers sat out too long or whatever maybe you have seasonal allergies whatever and then once you start having your bucket overflow then you're going to start getting histamine reactions from seemingly everything so foods that you've always been fine with. They can all of a sudden start causing problems. Um, and it's not so much that that food is a problem, it's that your bucket is overflowing and it doesn't know what to do with all the histamine from everything. <laughs> when 
did I say earlier? Um, sorry, I just don't like all the light. Uh, so yeah, I had actually gotten to the point I wasn't drinking any water. Um, milk doesn't seem to cause any problems with me, so I had actually, I was, I was still consuming liquids, it was just typically milk, because juice would, my root causes are mast cell and, and picos, and the picos side of things is definitely somewhat sugar related. Um, so, like, I can't drink juice and that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I, I would break out in hives just from drinking water and I could get away from that if I drank milk. So it was just easier if, if, if you're measuring success by not having reactions and you can drink milk and not have reactions, but you drink water and do, then typically you just avoid the, um, water. Um, I don't know, Scott. <laughs> I had a friend at work that was on the low FODMAP diet and she, whoa, are you okay? <laughs> he missed. <laughs> Um, so when we shut down, I had a friend that was, she had IBS issues and stuff and she was trying to do the low FODMAP diet and it seemed very bizarrely everywhere. <laughs> um, like there wasn't rhyme or reason to if something was good or bad. Um, <sighs> For me, it was one of those things where it was like, at one point I would try pretty much any kind of diet to see, you know, if it was helpful. Um, and actually, when I started having, not when I started like breaking out with chronic hives, because that was, was like 2019. Um, but spring of 2018, I lost 40 pounds in maybe two months. Um, I was doing really good at paleo and, and talking to my chiropractor about some of the things that had started happening, we figured out I was probably in keto. Um, yeah, so they have started the fireworks again tonight. <laughs> and this one back here is afraid of storms. So he is, is not terribly happy right now. Um, he's going to go hang out in my closet. Um, I'm not sure where Penga is. She had been right next to me. And then she typically doesn't like to be directly in front of a fan. So I didn't realize she was there. And wound up, but I wasn't like I kicked her across the room or anything, but like she was, she was in the path of my foot and I just kind of like, it went under her belly and lifted her up and scared her. Um, I do have stream yard. I've never had anybody on the panel. Um, let's see if I can do this. And that totally just undid what I did earlier. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> All right, so there is that. I'm going to open this back up because I just undid that. 
And then I'm just going to pin this. All right, copy. I'm sorry, guys. All right. All right. Um, oh, man. Oh, and then there goes the charger. <laughs> oh, my word, you guys. I am not good at this. <laughs> Hello. Hello. See, I got my kitty right here, too. Aww. Little baby cat. I'll turn on the light. Yeah, I'm just laying here. It's I can't stand I can't handle the heat because my psoriasis like uh, just the humidity just makes it worse. I can understand that. Now like so I have I have like this patch around my right ear. And the, I'm, I'm sure this sounds completely strange, but I've been told that it's thyroid specific, that it's like right here. A lot of yeah, people. Your ear? Yeah, like yeah, right. I have it right here too. <laughs> yeah. But only on one side. Yep, same here. I got it on this side. Yep. I was going to say, is that your right or your left? My left. Are you left handed or right handed? I'm right handed. Okay. <laughs> oh. My it's my family, right. Yeah, my whole family has thyroid issues, and my dad had thyroid cancer and had to have it removed. So then, you oh, know, no. then my doctor said, well, let's give you another sonogram. And that's when they found out, and he's like, oh, it shrank down to the size of a raisin. I'm like, okay, do I have cancer? And he goes, uh, no, <laughs> there's <laughs> nothing there to get cancer. So here's my question. How does it just randomly shrink? That's, I have no idea. But I'm on so much Synthroid right now, I'm on more than my dad. And my dad oh, wow. had his removed. So, I don't know. I'm just a mess. I'm a hot mess. <laughs> All right. Just because I know we do have some from the, the RV van life community... Red is going on at top of the hour. If you want to join her, feel free. Oh, I'm yeah. just kind of hanging out and talking all the health stuff. Kitty, <laughs> kitty. So cute. Yeah, this cat has been on my pillow, like, keeping me company since I've been laid off. I don't know. All right, and then I turned it all the way down, and it still sounds like I can hear it, so... Okay. I'm gonna go to bed though, hun. Oh. I wanted to say hi, and I'm looking at the camera here, but I don't know. <laughs> it's difficult on a phone. It's very difficult. I'm on my son's iPad, so you know. I know, and on the phone, look at this little flea bag. I was gonna say, well, thank you for sharing us, sharing your kitty with us. <laughs> Oh boy. And then I'm trying to fix my van myself so I'm out there under the thing, putting in a new starter. Yeah. In the heat. That in the I, heat. I was yeah. I was out there for maybe a half an hour duct taping this window. Yeah. Just we have no idea how it broke, but it was like it's got a hole in it, so it's like I've gotta do something or the next time it rains it's gonna go in behind that back quarter panel thing. Like, I don't need water problems on top of everything else. <sighs> but it's like, I was just, the itching has been horrible ever since I got back in, so. Yeah, what else is going to happen, you know? Uh, 
Ugh. Anyway. Well, sweet dreams. Yeah. I, I kind of like this idea of a panel. Should you guys? Should I? Should I do panels I do, like I this do, often? I do this. Um, I I met people um, in the homesteading community, and we go what? live in the mornings. And there's a there's a bunch of us like from Texas all over. And I actually, um, you know, I made friends with a lot of them. And I went and visited one that lived near me, like two hours away. And other people went, and we had a big barbecue and had swimming and stuff. It was fun. But we get up every morning, and there's like 12 of us on, or like nine of us on the panel. We do it for hours. So even while I was under the van putting the starter in, it was like live streaming on their thing. Because <laughs> I set my phone down, you know? Oh, no, I think we lost her. Hi, Reba. How are you doing? There you are. Anyway. <laughs> so anyway, it's fun because you get to see everybody and I don't know. Yeah. See what the weather is in different areas of the country. Anyway. I was gonna say, I, I like the kind of hang out and see where we can kind of the focus of my channel is histamine intolerance so it's like I kind of needed to have some slant towards that but it's like I like the hangout aspect as well yeah yeah I guess so. yeah what did they do the yesterday they they, they were playing Yahtzee on there so everybody had Yahtzee games at their house and they're like, what? <laughs> I was going to say, I don't know, maybe four houses ago when I still lived with my parents. Yeah, I guess enough. it would be four moves ago. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, anyway, I don't know. It's fun. Well, nice being you, honey. You too, Lori. Bye. Good night. See ya. See ya. We're I was going to say, home. sweet. Uh, okay, Reba, you're doing FODMAP and low histamine, reintroducing slowly. Fifty-two pounds, and that would be nice. <laughs> um, alpha bone tick bite allergy. IBS with reflex, reflux and GERD. <laughs> I and you know what, Scott? I don't focus on the EDS either. Um, and in all honesty, I probably wouldn't have found out about the mast cell related stuff if it wasn't for the fact that the functional doctor I was talking to had been my chiropractor. Um, of course, that affects the, the chiropractic side of things and getting my adjustments to hold. Um, and she happened to know that they were connected. Um, I don't, and that's one of those... <sighs> when I put up the first video, like decided I was doing YouTube and, and put up the first video. It was because I couldn't find the information I was looking for. And the best advice I could find was to starve myself. And I didn't want that to be the first thing somebody else saw when they got a histamine intolerance diagnosis. That's why I started doing the channel uh, on a health issue because um, I really don't focus on the EDS at all. <laughs> um, yeah, and see, my problem is it's hot inside, too, because I don't have AC. And my window is coming apart <laughs> or my window would be open. Um, my daughter went to close it and it, there was like this weird creaky sound to it. And the seal on the, the double panes has been broken for a while. But then like the whole bottom part started coming off. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, it's like... 
I didn't. I just kind of binge watched a whole bunch of stuff when. Um. Um. Sorry, I'm trying. I actually tracked it down. Um. And ran it so. For the longest time, I had not been able to find the advice that I had found that I followed. Oh, no, 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 don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to, this is why I don't do anything on my computer. Um, I'm trying to get to my subscriptions to go find this person and it almost went to to Kevin's live stream. Um, sue me. So when I was first di diagnosed, it was in like a consultation appointment thing. So and I don't honestly know if she has any other videos other than the last one I watched that are really decent. She hasn't published in a few years. Um, but she had put, hi Howie, she had put one video up and was basically, the advice was to pick one thing from each category. So like one grain, one meat, one vegetable, one fruit. I don't know that she ever said anything on the drink side of things, but literally, and, and it was just eat that until your symptoms subside and obviously choose, choose things that you don't think you're reacting to. Um, but so my, my kind of go to that first little bit was, um, boneless, skinless chicken breast that I cooked from frozen in the instant pot peas because I had a lot of them in the freezer and didn't think they affected me at all and rice that I cooked in the broth from the chicken just to give it some flavor um, oh interesting I focus more on my histamines and MCAS too. I got to keep them in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and honestly, that's sort of the EDS stuff. Once you realize, okay, you can, you know that you're more prone to dislocations and stuff. I'm, uh, I'm hyperflexibility type, so <laughs> I guess I am. I don't know if other people are. <laughs> um, stuff like that. Um, but then, like, if you know you have some things you can eat, even if it's very few, stuff will subside, and then you add back in, and I just did that one meal at a time. So I went from a week and a half of the, what I just told you guys about, and then I would do blueberries and milk for a smoothie in the morning um, on my way to work, just because I needed something. <laughs> um... I did that for like a week and a half straight. Was it boring? Yes. <laughs> I did find out that I do react to regular table salt though. Um, and then it wasn't really until after I got furloughed last spring that I had time to really research and kind of understand what was going on. Um, Have a great night, Reba. Sweet dreams. So I paid to have food sensitivity testing done at any lab test now. Um, I had been, oh, okay. So I had one doctor I had wanted to start working on the whole allergy thing. He referred me to an immunologist. The immunologist found out they couldn't just shove pills at me. 
So he referred me to a place. My insurance at the time wouldn't cover anything out of state. So he tried to send me to Indianapolis and then they said no. So then he referred me to somebody in South Bend and oh my word, it was like a two page intake form was all they gave me. The other, the place in Indianapolis that had been 10 plus pages. I get to the place in South Bend with my two pages, you know, and it wasn't even like a full, it was like front and back of a page to get two pages. The nurse sat with me for 45 minutes, basically filling out all of the stuff that had been on the 10 plus pages for the other place. And then the allergist sat with me for an hour and after about 45 minutes, she said, okay, can you like give me the story behind all this? Like, well, what's, I mean, I, I hear what you're saying. And like, she had caught mistakes that the nurse had put in without my telling her. Some of them I had told her, but it was like, then she started catching others. She wound up doing actual allergy testing on the things I was reacting to. Peppers, cabbage, um, eggplant. She may have done cilantro too. There was like five or six things that I was actually tested for as far as like it was, they drew blood to do the allergy test. Um, and all of them came back negative. And at that point, she's like, from what you're telling me, I am guessing that these are all going to come back negative. So from everything we've done today, the only thing you're allergic to is the um, anxiety medication. I would recommend not taking any anxiety medication. Um, and if these tests come back negative, go see your rheumatologist because it's got to do with the EDS. She didn't tell me it was mast cell related. Um, and my rheumatologist, oh, I followed up with him. I think he prescribed Wellbutrin to try and calm down my nerves and tried to put me on, um, some sort of NSAID again which hadn't worked the last time he prescribed them either. <laughs> um, I feel like I am sliding out of my chair. <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I never got allergy tested. I did, and I'll tell you, I, I don't know if I would have wound up with the histamine intolerance diagnosis if I hadn't gotten the sensitivity testing done. But basically, she looked at all of the paperwork I had sent her, because I got a bunch of other testing done as well. And like she does questionnaires and things. And... Um, Looking at the foods, she, I don't know what list she was looking at, but I guess a lot of the things I was, that are on my, it kind of splits them out. Extreme, moderate, and mild, and okay. Um, looking at, a, at it, a lot of the stuff was high histamine foods that I was reacting to. Um, but not all of them. So, um, so yeah. And like the functional doctor that diagnosed me, she, it, I mean, it was like a consultation appointment. She'll read exams and do stuff like that, but she doesn't take patients. So, um, this year, the only way to get an appointment with her was to be in the class that she's teaching. I did join the class. Um, 
and I've been in it for two quarters and I'm not, I'm not doing it for a third because I really haven't gotten that much out of it. Um, I mean, so the first one, the first thing she wanted everybody to do was go paleo, which kind of started the downward spiral for me. Um, so really not something I was comfortable with. Um, so like, I mean, I tried to clean stuff up as much as I could, but, um, I'm definitely not paleo. <laughs> um, and this last quarter, it's been like detoxing and like, so like there was this one exercise where we were supposed to eat two tablespoons of sesame seeds and to find out how fast things were moving through our system and stuff. I never got a response on if there was something else I could use because sesame seeds are going to be in and out of my system in two hours. Um, and a lot of things this quarter, it's like, well, try and introduce fermented foods into your diet. Guess what? That didn't go well. Yeah, it is getting to be hard to find a good doctor, um, unfortunately. And, and I can't really fault her for for not taking patients because she's actually trying to teach doctors how to integrate some of the functional medicine. So I can't really fault her for that, but at the same time, I it's frustrating that she would recommend this class when it really hasn't been helpful and she knew what my situation was. That's what that's where my my disappointment came in. Um, sweet dreams, Howie, if you're still here. I'm sorry. I'm just kind of all over the place. Yeah, I'm, I'm not good with sesame. Um, I thought about trying it with flax, but I don't. I'm sorry. <sighs> the heat. <laughs> I, it's like I can feel the hives on the back of my shoulder right now. <laughs> Oh my. So yeah, I hmm. So this might be a stupid question. Is sesame a common allergy thing? Because I thought I was unusual in that respect. And it's not one of those things that I would typically think to ask somebody about. Ah, uh, now see, that's, that's where the EDS comes in. <laughs> um, I can reach the center of my back with my nails. I just don't look quite I, I wouldn't I don't want to do that on camera <laughs> like, <laughs> um, I actually I I had a conversation on a live I, a week or two ago somebody said something about needing a new back scratcher and I'm like I thought that was just a gimmick to get somebody to spend money. I didn't know people actually bought them. No, um, sorry. I have EDS. Um, <laughs> that's probably where the MCAS stuff came from for me. Um, it's from the EDS. And I'm hyper flexibility type. So, like, for me... Like, okay, so the other day when my, or the other day, the other week when my hips were out, I was sitting to garden, but like my typical way of gardening, I would just bend at the waist and I would just work up essentially upside down. 
until I started having problems with vertigo, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, I went to three stores to avoid Walmart today, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm pretty sure Dollar General has back scratchers too. Now see, psoriatic arthritis kept coming up in my research. I still haven't put out a video on oxalates, but it, it was coming up in my oxalates research and possibly my cells research. Um, as being one of those things that's problematic. Um, and I'm pretty sure Low Sal Life actually did a video on that. I will look after this. And I will post it in the comments if she did. <laughs> um, I, I'm kind of getting to the point I feel like we all are, especially if we have the whole mast cell issue stuff going on just because of the heat. Like, I know some people that hide, hide all the problems really well, but the heat, I can't hide. Um, I don't know. Scott and Reba both mentioned the whole FODMAP thing. I know the one thing I remember from from when my friend was going through all that was that she couldn't have anything to do with apples. And that always seemed weird to me, and that's one thing I can definitely eat as a snack and stuff without problem. Um... But yeah, I don't, and as far as the mast cells go, I don't know if you've checked out the food videos I've done. The ones that are low lectin, um, a lot of that's basically in response to the mast cell stuff. Yeah, and see, I don't seem to have problems with celery as long as it's not been sitting around forever. And I don't have problems with apples or applesauce. I'm not sure why canned applesauce doesn't matter. Um, and so like soy, the, what was it? I was buying the mayo from Aldi's that's supposed to be made with olive oil. Come to find out it's a blend of olive oil and soy oil. So I'm working on finding an alternative for that. And otherwise, I think the only soy in my diet is the occasional unfermented liquid aminos. And I do, at this point, run that through the Instant Pot which kills off the lectins and I don't have a problem with it. Occasionally I get the, the chocolate hazelnut spread stuff and I can't say I don't have it. I shouldn't have it just because of the sugar. Um, sugar is a big, but then again, my second root cause is um, Picos. And major issue there is insulin resistance. So I shouldn't, and aside from the fact that I react to cane sugar, um, 
a lot of the stuff that I eat is not processed. So, like, the meat that I get, um, I buy straight from the butcher. Well, the beef that I get, I buy straight from the butcher. Um, I do get chicken. And I think that's got a salt solution, but I don't believe it has any soy added. Now, granted, they probably eat soy. Um, okay, so yeah, the peanuts that I get are roasted in either soy or canola oil. I was pre-diabetic, and I... The last time I got an A1C, I am no longer pre-diabetic. Um, one thing that she had us doing the first quarter, though, and you might find some use in this, we were checking our blood sugar two hours after we ate certain foods. So... <sighs> Well, and, like, we started off, we started off with, like, just a meal. Like, you know, whatever, and making note of what the meal was and then test two hours later type of thing. I found out stuff like ice cream doesn't skyrocket my blood sugar nearly as much as stuff like pasta. Um, the dairy... <laughs> Like drinking milk, um, it, it seemed to keep me in that like 85 to 90 range though. But then it's like asking questions like, I've, I've seen some places say, well, you should never go over 100. And I've seen others say, well, after a meal, you're going to go up to like 130 or 150 and that's not a problem. So I don't, why can't anybody ever agree on anything? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like lately, I know I do okay with broccoli, and that's one of those, so, for the longest time I had quit going, yeah, I've got a cat that's diabetic, and she was up in like four and five hundreds regularly, um, so it, it was one of those, I figured if the highest reading I ever got when I was doing this was 135, I didn't figure I was too bad. <laughs> um, what am I thinking? Um, I completely lost my train of thought, didn't I? K's? I'm not sure what case is. Oh, I was mentioning broccoli. So I had read in some research that the goitrogens and um, cruciferous vegetables, um, no, broccoli is not a nightshade, um, could cause problems with thyroid. So I had quit eating raw cruciferous vegetables, except for radishes. I had, For the longest time I had... Radishes were my snack. I would slice up up radishes and eat them with salt. Um, so then I found a couple other pieces of research a month or two ago, and it was like, you would have to eat like 150 pounds of, of cruciferous vegetables raw in a day to have problems with the goitrogens causing problems with your thyroid and I'm like, you can't be serious. <laughs> um, so I started, uh, like I picked up, I started getting broccoli, like just fresh broccoli as a snack. And that actually seems to be doing like, I don't know, it seems like some of the Symptoms you would expect from from your estrogen and progesterone levels being off 
It seems like some of that evens out when I've been eating broccoli just as a snack. Now, granted, I'm eating it with ranch, and that's probably not the best for me, but, you know, <laughs> can't lose. I can't win all of them. Um, as far as the nightshades, that is tomatoes, potatoes, eggplant, peppers, tomatillos, ashwagandha is also a nightshade. And I do react to nightshades. Um, the ones that you see in my recipes have all been run through the pressure cooker. Um, before eating them. Um, and honestly, like I still haven't tried eggplant. I still haven't tried tomatillos. Um, I still don't eat a whole lot of them. Just like... You know, occasionally I'll have spaghetti sauce on something or that kind of thing. Um, where the kids will want potatoes. They Number one, they just like steamed potatoes. So <laughs> I just do the potatoes in the Instant Pot and then I can snack on them too. And I don't really do that because the carbs and the whole insulin resistance thing. So... Um, yeah. You were wanting to go to bed. I am probably keeping you up. I am sorry. <laughs> um. But yeah, so I've, I haven't been, I don't know, I kind of got burnt out on the radishes. And all of the ones I had planted bolted. Because, um, see, I originally I bought a five-pound field bag of daikon radish seed because I was going to replace potatoes with daikon radish. And I figured, okay, I can sprout some too and stuff. And it was a good deal. Let's put it down. <laughs> it was one of those that even in the spring they bolted. Um, it was one of those things where a one pound bag was going to be like 21 and change and I was going to have to pay shipping or I could get a five pound field bag on prime for 24, 25, somewhere in there. So it's like, huh, one or two bucks difference. I might as well get the other four pounds of seed. Um, I did have good luck with the daikon last fall. So, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, I've got a couple broccoli plants that are surviving, and I did plant a tomato the peppers haven't come up because I haven't gotten them planted. Funny how that works. <laughs> um, probably have black raspberries soon. We had a really good strawberry yield this summer. Now that I shouldn't be eating strawberries. <sighs> course I didn't know that for five oh holy cow I guess it's actually probably been closer to eight years ago that I planted the strawberries now um and if they had all flushed at the same time and it was on a kid week we totally could have had strawberry shortcake out of our own garden um and that's the first year we've had that so they love strawberries and all of the neighborhood kids love strawberries so that's one of those things I'm not ripping them out because if I can get kids interested in gardening, I'm going to. Um, yeah. Is there anything that's not, I guess I, I, I do have a couple sweet potatoes I need to get in the ground yet. And they love the seed. But otherwise, like, I'm kind of hard pressed for what on earth can I plant that is actually something good for me to eat that still likes hot weather. You know what I mean?
Aw, Charlie just rolled over. <laughs> oh! I was going to say, and I have been doing my herb journaling on Thursday nights. I didn't last week. And I think I had tech issues the week before that. Um, they are actually going to move to my other channel in case you're interested in coming over there. Um, and I know they say that you shouldn't like think about Ah. Oh, it's very sticky. Um, I know they say you shouldn't think about YouTube, but it's one of those it's one of those things that I don't think I don't think YouTube understands how the herb journaling stuff fits in with the histamine stuff. And to some degree, like, it pulls in other liability issues that I don't really want around my main channel, if you know what I mean. So. There, and hopefully it will work out okay but in case that's in the things that you might be interested in <laughs> um, and I'm normally at 10 although I part of me is wanting to just go ahead and move it up to 9 because the show I had been watching I'm not watching so There's not really anything saying I couldn't go on earlier. And I can't guarantee it'll be, like if I have to let something drop, it'll be the herb journaling rather than stuff on this channel. But, you know. I keep looking over at the. I cleaned out a bunch of books again. And now it's like, what other books can I get rid of? <laughs> oh my. Well, you needed to go to bed. I need a refill on water again. So I think I am going to go ahead and say goodbye for tonight. And... Hopefully I will see you again later this week or next week. Um, and now you know where to find me <laughs> later this week if you want to. So I will see you guys later. It looks like some people came back in. But I'm getting off. Sorry. Um, Red is on. Her link is pinned if you need somewhere to go. Um, otherwise, Kevin may or may not still be on over at 30 and a wake up. I'll talk to you guys later.